Hey everybody, today we're going to look at the compressor. This is one of the stock plugins in Logic. I've always really enjoyed this plugin, but some stuff happened this week and I really began to question how it was working. And so I did a bunch of testing with this and found some actually really surprising results. So what the idea is, is that we have seven, seven different algorithms here for this plugin. Different types of compressors you might find out in real professional studios. They've taken those, modeled them after them, and here we have this plugin. So let me show you, first of all, one of the things I discovered. So I've got this snare drum here. I'm going to turn off this compressor for a second. Let me close that, open up the one that's on this actual channel, turn it off, and I'm just going to play the sample for you. Now, I wanted to make sure that this was pretty much exactly a certain level, so I put a limiter on here, and it is being limited to minus 10 dB. I'm going to push this up just a little harder. Okay, so it is hitting that peak. A little bit different in one channel than the other. That's the original sample. Not a big deal either way. Then I put a multimeter on it just so we could verify the level. So you can see minus 10 in the left and minus 10.8 in the right. Fine. Then I put a compressor on here, which is the one that was just on the screen. And this is what we're going to be using for this test. And then I put another multimeter after it so I could really see exactly what the levels were here. And I found some interesting things. So we're going to make this a little bit bigger. I don't think we need to see that. So here's what I did. Let's turn this on now. My ratio is set to 5 to 1. My threshold is set to minus 20. My knee is set to a hard knee. I've got the shortest attack time and the shortest release time. Auto gain is turned off. The auto attack and release are turned off. We don't have any makeup gain. We have no distortion or other limiter happening here, no side chain. So literally, we just have the threshold and the ratio. That's really the only two parameters I'm looking at right now. Because I made sure that the snare sound was a minus 10, it means that it's crossing this threshold by 10 dB. And with the ratio of 5 to 1, that means for every 5 decibels that go over the threshold, it should let two through. Under this, if you just think about the math, if you just did a straight volume compressor with no color or anything else, you should have minus 18. Actually, that should be what's coming through at the other side. So all of that then taken for granted, let's see what we actually do come through with our Platinum Digital. Now, the first thing with this one is, even though we're 10 dB above that threshold, the Platinum Digital doesn't actually do anything. I'm not making this up. It literally is not engaging anything. It's coming through as if it was untouched. Now, you might think, well, maybe something else is not engaged or this is the wrong compressor. Let's just switch this to Studio VCA. You saw I didn't touch anything else. It actually is working, and yet it's not at minus 18. These numbers are actually further, well, they're about the same amount apart, but we're at minus 14, which means that it is actually letting more through still than what we would have expected. So the signal's hotter overall. Switch to the Studio FET. This is taking it down to the threshold. Hard, really nothing is getting through the threshold. It's almost like a limiter. With this one, switch to VCA. Barely doing anything. Vintage VCA. The sound of that one is actually quite different. 
And it is also doing a lot of compression there. Vintage FET. That one's actually one of the closest to the actual amount we're expecting. And then Opto. It's doing some, but you can see the peak is still going almost all the way up. So it's letting through a little bit. So it doesn't have quite as fast of attack time as the others. Okay, so, so different on each of these. From the Platinum Digital, which claims in the manual to have a clean sounding compression type with a fast transient response. And I've seen it do stuff overall, but in this case with this sample, it's not doing anything. So that was one test. Then I was like, well, what else is happening here? It can't just be the level and the timing. So I sent a tone through there and I set up another channel here. Let me actually show you. Here's my test tone, 1K signal at minus 10 dB. I've got a compressor here and a multimeter. Now I'm not gonna play this out loud because that 1K tone will probably drive you insane before we even get to the end. But I do wanna look at a few things that are happening here. So first of all, Platinum Digital, it is actually doing some reduction. Again, almost identical settings to the other compressor I was just showing you. We've taken the knee attack release. And in fact, because it's a constant tone, it really wouldn't matter anyway. So we're just really looking at the threshold and the ratio, so reduction, but also seeing what else this particular plugin is doing to our sound. So with Platinum Digital, with a test tone, you'll see that it is actually doing something as opposed to with the snare drum before. So a constant tone is activating it. We have an LUFS reading or a loudness unit, a full scale digital reading of the right amount, minus 18. That's where it should be. It's a little bit off, but close. But the peak is reading an additional three decibels less than that. But not bad overall. If we turn off the compressor, you'll see the wave or the harmonic content looks almost identical. With this one, Studio VCA, look at all the harmonics now that are being added into this signal. It's taking that tone and something is either being overloaded or distorted or added to add the color of this compressor, but really interesting. Also, it's close with the, the loudness unit, but not exact. And the peak and the RMS are both not where we expect them. Studio FET, even more additional harmonic content here. So it's definitely taking that initial and adding a bunch of crap here, trying to make a sound like this. Also notice that when I reset that, it's going to minus 20, which means that the output is essentially the same as a threshold. Coming down to the classic VCA, softer, but the average amounts and the loudness unit amounts are what we'd expect. Very little harmonic additions up here. This one here, the classic VCA, ends up being the one that works the most like an actual compressor as I would expect it. Vintage. Check out what's happening with this sine wave. Now you don't hear all of this when you have like a snare drum coming through. Something about this sine wave is triggering all of this. This is like a noise floor, but it does explain why sometimes you hear a little bit different in some of the noisy type areas of your tracks. So this is either a bug or really interesting design. Then we have the vintage FET. Look at all the harmonics here added although it's relatively close to an output, but it definitely changes your sound. And then the vintage also is adding these harmonics. So of all of these, what I learned is that the classic VCA is the one that works and functions the most like what I'm expecting when I actually use a compressor, but you don't have the attack and release times with this particular model. Of the other ones, 
I find that there's a wide range of what's happening here and things that are being added and put into your signal as you use them. That's part of what makes this tool so cool. Just realize, number one, that the compressor is a tool which is definitely coloring your sound. And each of these different options is changing your sound in very, very distinct and specific ways. So that just means that as you use this, learn the colors of the, the actual tool. Use them in specific situations. Don't just assume that one of these is going to be the perfect answer, but try each of them to find which one actually does sound the best. Okay, just wanted to share some of the stuff I found out about the compressor this week, looking a little closer, trying to a little bit reverse engineer what they did with this. There are tons more tests I could run, but these two are the first ones that came to mind and showed just really interesting results. Hope you enjoyed this, and I will see you all soon.